Hey there everyone, welcome to another Let's Play. This time I am actually doing something interesting. Let me adjust my window, I think it cuts out the sound. Um, but I am going to be playing the Stanley Parable. You'll notice Jacob's not with me, and for a very specific reason. I want to play this game alone, and then see how he will do it. Because this is one of those games where you sort of react to your own things, and if he were here when I did my part of the playthrough, then it would spoil things for him. So I'm just going to do my part, and then we'll get to his lighter. So, here we go. This game used to be a, well, it still is an indie game, but it used to be a free mod download, and now they've beefed it up a bit, so I'm curious to see what's going to come out of the game itself, as it were. <coughs> Excuse me. going to take a bit for it to load, apparently. But yeah, The Stanley Parable was a indie game that, well yeah, it, it was one of the ones that I definitely paid attention to. I think I might have mentioned it back in the Samcast days whenever we were still doing that show. But yeah, it's a pretty awesome game, and I just wanted to play it now that it's all beefed up, as it were. Yeah, there's a reason why I don't do Let's Plays alone anymore. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So yeah, this thing goes on the basic principle that you have this narrator going on the whole time. You'll, you'll catch on, as, like I said, I've played it before, so... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. See, so I'm going to follow the orders. I have a feeling Jacob won't. That's why I'm doing it this way. Because we all know Jacob, whenever he can break rules, he does. Well, not that mean, but yeah. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, now this makes fun of the whole office cubicle thing. Everyone is unique. You must have... <laughs> I think everyone's gotten that out of an environment before. Let's see here. Number of slides on this slide. Charts, slides, charts, and slides. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, this thing has a really twisted sense of humor.
Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I would almost be curious. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Oh, there's something in there. But anyway, I'll carry on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> Two, eight, Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Ooh, nice. Everything looks a bit more shiny because they've taken time for it, so it's one of those things. This thing takes a while to load, though. That's the only complaint I may have about this game, is the load times on it. Especially for you guys, because it's not entertaining watching a loading screen. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. See, now you could follow that, but I'm, like I said, I'm gonna be good and follow all the orders. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This has got a bit more of the feel of what they originally intended to. This is really neat. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? I love this narrator, by the way. But here was the proof. 
the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. How do I do that? Let's see here. It's like a big threatening button. A big five. <laughs> And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. <laughs> Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. All of his co-workers were gone. Yeah, that's... What could it mean? Okay. So, <sighs> there is a playthrough of this Stanley parable following all of the rules that the voiceover gives you. Now, obviously, the whole premise of the game is that you start to not follow the rules, and it just turns into utter chaos. So, I'm going to present Jacob with this game later, and he is going to probably not follow the rules. I'm not even going to tell him how this works, to be honest. I'm just going to sit him in front of the game, and we'll see how it all plays out. But, until then, if you want to find the other Let's Plays, you can go to tscn.tv slash play, and you'll be able to find Jacob's playthrough of this later on. So, until next time, play on, and I'm really eager to see how this little experiment goes. See ya! This has been a production of the Samcast Network, tscn.tv. What's your passion? <laughs>